Support companies that help support the Stony Ridge Farm. Subscribe to the channel and contact Farm Fence Solutions for all of your fence building and tornado wire needs. Hey there folks, this is Josh Stony Ridge Farmer. Welcome back to another beautiful cloudy day here on the Stony Ridge Farm. We're here in the foothills of the Blue Ridge Mountains in North Carolina and today we're going to talk a little bit about fencing. We're going to talk a little bit about this little tractor and we're going to tell you what mistakes not to make when it comes to building your fence on your farm. So whether you've already got a fence established on your property or you're buying a new piece of property, we're gonna give you some awesome food for thought and we're gonna take the Honey Badger, which is our Ventrac 4500Y, and we're gonna show you what an awesome machine this is for maintaining our fence lines. And we'll visit with the cows. So come along, let's learn a little bit, have a little bit of fun and get some pretty cool shots of the farm. All right, woo! I ain't afraid of work. I ain't afraid to play. I ain't afraid to get the job done and do it my own damn way. I ain't afraid of life. Times like this. If you mess with my freedom, I'll tell you just what you can kiss. <laughs> donkey. It's a donkey party. <laughs> Watch this. Hey, girls. Woo! <laughs> so guys, welcome to the Stony Ridge Farm Channel. If this is your first time, please pound that like button, jump in, subscribe to the channel. I'd love to have you back. If you've been here a bunch of times, share these videos with like-minded people, guys. That's how the channel grows. That's how I continue to put out the content that I put out here on YouTube and Facebook. If you're not following on Facebook and Instagram, jump on it. Get on it, son. So we're down here with our herd. This is a mob of about 32 black Angus cattle. So black Angus cattle are what we're raising here on the farm. We're out here and they have about 35 acres of pasture right now. We were intensively mob grazing our pastures until Josh started traveling a little bit. So I've got them opened up to a larger piece of pasture while I travel over the next couple weeks. What we've got going here is our fencing and our fencing is Titan 134812 means 13 line wires those are the cross wires 48 tall and 12 inch stay spacing between the wires okay this isn't Titan this is actually a different wire uh, this was a quarter mile roll that we uh, spun and it's all tornado wire from Farm Fence Solutions so what we did on the farm and what you guys will see in the drone footage is you see this space this void Okay, we didn't want to be within 25 feet of the creek. This is a floodplain down here, and there's another floodplain on the other side of the farm. The creek will get up all the way into here, and what we didn't want is for the fencing to get taken out by the creek. So guys, if you're building fence on your property, you need to be thinking about that. Be sure you know the way the water behaves on your property, okay? Now, the Ventrac, and you'll get lots of footage of it. That is a Ventrac 4500 watt. It's got a six foot, finish deck on it. That finish deck is what I maintain the fence lines with. And you can see it's nice and groomed down here. We're gonna walk over here to this corner. We're gonna kind of explain the fencing to you just a little bit. Um, so there is a pipe. You saw the water down there. There's a pipe that's running right here. It runs underneath this little pathway and goes up there to the pond. That's how the cows get watered. We're on the corner right here. Now, this is a four inch Schedule 40 SS40 steel post okay this is not this is not let me reassure you this is not grandma's chain link fence post okay guys have i had any trouble with them being open with uh, freezing or anything like that no because these posts conduct heat from the ground and we live in north carolina where i think the frost line is about 12 to 16 inches there is another post out there, a six foot three inch stubby post. And this is a two and a half inch post right here. This is the fence brace. Do we have any trouble with bracing inside the pasture? No. Is it a pain in the butt? No. Is it a problem? No, not at all. And you'll see there's another brace up on the corner. Do you see this distance between the forest and the fence? It'll be very apparent once we get down on the other side of the farm and we get some shots from the drone. The reason we built off of the forest is because if we built right up to the woods, we're gonna end up with tree limbs constantly falling on our nice new fence. Now this is tight. <laughs> Let me show you guys how tight this fence is. The cow's been leaning on it a little bit. This, 
that is tight. This is high tensile woven wire. There's woven wire and then there's high tensile woven wire. This stuff is pulled ultra, ultra tight. Our spacing on our post can be wider because the pipe fence is stronger. It will last longer and the wire is so tight. So we have 25 foot spacing between our fence post. That is awesome, absolutely awesome. What we'll be doing today is I'm just gonna cruise along here and we'll take the drone and uh, get you guys some shots of what goes on, the maintenance that goes into this fencing. And I'll go around the first lap as close as I can get to the fence, blowing the grass that way, outward away from the uh, fence line. When I come back through, I'll blow the grass toward the fence line. What that does is it piles up a little pile of grass right here and keeps the weeds down. We do not, do not, do not spray our fence lines. The cows will take their little tongues and they'll reach out and they'll get whatever it is they want to munch on. You can see there's a little tree that come, came up right here and a little bit of multifloral rose that's coming up right here. We'll come back here and we'll clip that. We'll run the weed eater down and get all that stuff. But for the most part, over the past four years, I've never weed eated, well maybe once, <laughs> one time, I weed eated the fence lines and then I learned I just didn't have to do it. Once we got the cows, you don't have to weed the fence line. So, um, let's hop on the honey badger. We'll go over and take a look at the honey badger real quickly. Again, all of our fencing comes from Worthington, Indiana, Farm Fence Solutions. I will post a link at the end of this video. We went to the factory where this wire was built. It'll show you where all this type of wire is built, the various different types of knots, how it's all woven together, and we'll get to see barbed wire, how barbed wire is made too. So again, I get this question asked all the time, where does the Ventrac fit in to your farm? Where does it fit in? How does it fit in? I know you got a 110 horsepower TYM tractor, a 25 horsepower yard tractor from TYM, the T254, and a zero turn mower for mowing the yard. Where does this fit in? Well, this fits in everywhere. So I've got several attachments. I've got a brush hogging attachment for this critter. I've got a landscape rake attachment for this critter. I've got a stump grinder for this critter and I've got the finish mower. The thing that I use the most is that finish mower right there and it does absolutely awesome. This is a 24.8 horsepower Kubota diesel engine in this machine. It's all belt driven. So in other words, you don't have a big shaft drive. If something breaks, it doesn't break. It just spins a belt and you just replace the belt. So we keep lots of extra belts and lots of extra blades on hand because I'm mowing a farm. And when I mow a farm, oftentimes I'll run off in a hole or I'll hit a little stump or something like that and I'll bend a blade. It takes a lot to bend one of these blades, guys. It is super, super, super tough. Comfortable machine, it's got the uh, the spring-loaded seat right there, the new suspension seat we just put on there. I have about 410 hours on this machine. It has been completely trouble-free the whole time I've had it. I absolutely recommend it. And you see how it's got eight tires. In other words, two tires here, two tires here, and on the other side, this thing will mow an embankment. And <laughs> Ventrac might not want you to hear this, but if as long as it'll hold the ground that it's on, it'll mow it, okay? The only problem I've ever gotten into is getting into something that was too steep and the mower slid down. So this thing is like a little caterpillar. It just crawls all over the farm. And that's what makes it super awesome for maintaining fence lines. I can put that finish mower in grass that's this deep and you're gonna see that in just a minute and it cuts like a champion. You gotta slow down for sure, but it absolutely cuts like a champ. So. If you guys have any questions about the Ventrac tractor or any questions about the fencing here on the farm, why did we use steel posts? Because I didn't want to be 80 years old and out here rebuilding my fences. I wanted my fences to last me, last my lifetime, outlast me really. So we've got a 100 year fence versus a 20 to 40 year fence with a wooden fence post. And that's why we went with the steel posts. So the corner posts are schedule 40, four inch post. The brace posts are two and a half or three inch brace posts. They are 10 or 12 feet long. I believe they're 10. There's a six foot stubby in the ground where all the braces are welded. And the only maintenance, oh, and the line posts are two inch schedule 40 and those are eight foot line posts. We drove all of these with a Protec fence post driver. Bam, it's fencing season guys. So in the next couple weeks, I'll be going to the fencing competition out in Worthington, Indiana. I encourage all of you to go. Look on farmfencesolutions.com. You can come there, you can meet me and you can learn a ton about fencing. 
So, we wanted a 100 year fence. We've got a 100 year fence. We spent a little bit of extra money to get the right fence built. And we sacrificed about a 12 foot swath, anywhere from six to 12 feet, uh, all the way around the perimeter of our farm so that we have the security of no tree limbs constantly falling on the fence. There's only one section of fence that goes through the woods and I'm constantly picking tree limbs off of that fence. So if there's a take home message for you guys, it's don't build your fence in the woods. Clear out a spot and make sure you can get all the way around the outside perimeter of your fence if you're building new fence on the farm. It's easier to maintain. And now we're gonna go maintain it. Guys, thanks a lot for joining me here today. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned a little bit about fencing and about building your fence and your future plans for your property, for your farm. And I hope you learned a little bit about a cool tractor. The Ventrac is super, super awesome, guys. What a hard working tractor. So from me and the cows, we're all gonna say woo and goodbye. Thanks a lot, guys. We'll see you in the next video. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> see you guys. Come on down. Stony Ridge, bring your wild